Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the house of our God. All right. And yes, happy Father's Day to everybody in the house. Amen. I think we have a special Father's Day message today, but I think that's how God operates. I wonder if anybody's awake today. I wonder. A little lull in the house today. I don't see any energy in the house. Anybody out there? Stand up, do some jumping jacks, walk around the room. You're going to make me do something silly. Everybody stand up and greet three people and then sit down. You know, that's why they do it. You know, we don't do it, but that's why they do it, because everybody's sleeping out there. Everybody stand up and go say hello to three people. Dance around the room. <laughs> anyway, if you behave, we don't have to do that. <laughs> but uh, praise God, everybody. Let the presence of God not fill the house, for the presence of God does fill the house. May God open up your eyes that you may see the glory of the Lord that fills the earth. Amen, everybody? Amen. All right, amen. Uh, first, we acknowledge the family. Of course, we acknowledge the fathers, but we acknowledge the family. I have a, a special acknowledgement trick for your family, Andy and Bear. God bless you guys. We say welcome. <laughs> Trick's son and daughter, you've come on a long journey. You have been in our thoughts and prayers for quite some time. And I guess God in his uh, sovereignty um, decided to have you come closer. And we're glad for it and we're blessed for it. So we welcome you very much so. So may you uh, find God in a whole new way and uh, enjoy the family that's here for you. God bless you guys. Amen. We say Tiger Lou, um, our thoughts and our prayers are with you. We see you and uh, we pray for you, sir. Uh-huh. And uh, you belong to this house and to our family, and we watch over you, and we pray God's peace and God's health and God's strength for you, sir. Uh, even in your, your um, trials, you still come and you are faithful to the house of God, so we thank you for that, sir. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Jennifer and Damon, we, we say blessings upon you as you go to uh, memorialize your father this, this uh, coming week. Uh, may God bless you and all that you have to say and do for your family. Amen. Amen, everybody. God bless the families, everybody, right? It's our family. We, uh, we welcome Pastor Phil's son. Amen, Alex. Welcome to the house of God. It's nice that you come to uh, acknowledge your dad and wish your dad a happy Father's Day. So uh, we acknowledge you today. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, on this Our Father's Day, I would very much like to talk to you about the mystery of faith. I believe the mystery of faith is something that is passed down from generation to generation. As a matter of fact, I believe it was passed down to, maybe some of you can think about folks in your family, perhaps uh, fathers, mothers, grandmothers, grandfathers, who uh, you've had the faith passed down to you. Uh, any, anybody in the house? I wonder. You know, I think of Timothy, uh, when, when Paul laid his hands upon, upon Timothy, and, and Paul said to Timothy, I'm reminded of the faith that was in your mother and was in your grand grandmother and now resides inside of you. Amen? Yeah, the mystery of faith. There's a mystery. There's something about faith that you'll understand, and there's something about faith that you will never understand, but you will possess it and you will live by it. That is the word of the Lord, everybody. On this, our Father's Day, I would acknowledge our father, Pastor Dad, and the faith that you have passed down to us. Not only to us as an as a, a immediate family, but as the church family. I want to acknowledge and, 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 and dedicate the day to our elder Petrozello, our Uncle Nick, who's also a father of faith and who has also brought us up in, in the faith of God. Amen, everybody. Amen. Yes, they taught us to live by faith. They taught us to live by faith. The Bible teaches us all that we all have the same fathers of faith. You can look into the Bible and you can read about Father Abraham. We all have the same father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We were all raised in faith and we all have the gift of faith. Faith has taught us everybody, has taught us to live by faith and not by sight. Amen. And even as we come to this house, we are taught to live by faith and not by sight. We have been taught by faith that everything that is seen was made by everything that is unseen. The most real part of you and this world is invisible. Amen. And that's what faith taught us. Faith taught us not to look to what is seen. Faith taught us not to look. I remember my mother specifically saying, do not look to the eyes and to the faces of man. But look to your Father in heaven. Amen, everybody. Amen. 
for the things that are invisible are real. I love the fact that the things are invisible created the things that are. You want to think that you're smart and civilized and sophisticated, then ignore everything around you. Ignore what you see and what you feel and look for the invisible God that rules and reigns over all things. Amen, everybody. That's right. You can look to the news and you can think that the world is in dishonor. You can think that the president's rule and the governor's rule and the politicians rule. And you think that the world and our nation is in their hands and in their power. But I would say you must look with the eyes of faith and you must see that there is a God that presides over it all. As smart as you think you are, as intuitive as you think you are, you think you know who pulls the strings. I'll tell you who pulls the strings. <laughs> the invisible God and father of us all. Amen. You don't have to learn about politics. No, you don't. Why? Learn about God. Who rules the world? God. Everybody else is a mere mortal. <laughs> Amen. Do I have to get you to stand up and shake three hands before you? Everybody, I want everybody to switch seats. Everybody in the back, I know you're not gonna listen to me. Everybody in the back, sit in the front. Everybody in the front sit on your head. <laughs> All right, just seeing if you're listening. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Come on, Chris, you start. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. I, you, I know you wanted to do it as soon as I said it. <laughs> the most precious thing that our fathers have ever given to us is faith. It's the greatest thing. We were at the kitchen table last night and my father found some old coins. <laughs> and he, 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 was, he always gives out his coins and the coins are valuable, but I say more than my brothers, I might lose your coins. <laughs> as valuable as they may be, but we will never lose our faith. I might consider the things of this world of little value, but we will always consider the things of the spirit realm something to fight for, to hold on to, to cherish. We consider there's nothing greater. There's nothing of this earth that holds any value, but the things of God. And our fathers, everybody, have given us faith to believe in the unseen. Amen. All right. All right. So what is faith? <laughs> okay, everybody. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going there. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11 is the, the faith chapter. Now, what is faith? This is what faith is, everybody. I'm going to read some of the verses in Hebrews chapter 11. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. You want to repeat that last part? The evidence of things, that's right, not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understood the worlds were framed by the word of God. That's right. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. There is a God that rules the whole world, and some of us are too sophisticated to see it and know it. We think that everything else rules the world. God rules the world. You want to get in good, good uh, uh, standing with someone? Get in good standing with God. You're on top of it all, man. Right? I encourage you always. I've always encouraged you. You want to know somebody? Know God. You want to know somebody? Know God. Ha! For he is the ruler of everything that is. And he's available to us all. Why do we disregard it and pursue what is mortal, what is seen, what is temporal, when we have access to what is real and all-powerful and almighty? The almighty God is ours. It's ours in all of his fullness. And he will make you more powerful than a locomotive, faster than a speeding bullet, able to jump. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's, that's Superman. <laughs> to jump buildings in a single bound, something like that, Phil? Yeah, you're not, you're not playing. <laughs> we have access to God. 
Nobody has power over your life except for God. And he is with you and he is for you. He is yours, everybody. Amen. By faith, we know that the worlds were made by the invisible God. By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. By faith, it says of Enoch that he was translated. What does it say of Enoch Pop? It says that he walked with God and was not. I had to help you the whole thing. You didn't even bail me out. <laughs> yes, but yes. Okay, all right. I knew you had something to say. <laughs> you walked with God. I remember you repeating that frequently. He walked with God and was not. He just walked with God. Nothing else mattered. It says here, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. This always confused me or challenged me as a younger believer. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. I always wondered, do I have faith to please God? Well, if you believe in God, I believed in God. That means I had faith. That means I please him. Do you believe in God? Yeah. Okay. You got faith. You please him. It's just that simple. Why do we make it so complicated, Pastor Phil? You know, like, do I have faith? <laughs> You believe in God, right? Well, you have faith. You please him. Voila, done. I mean, it's not really hard. <laughs> so silly sometimes. Anyway, we know that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Sunday morning, coming down, sometimes in the rain. But you seek him, therefore you shall find him. It says, by faith, Noah built an ark. By faith, Abraham moved to a new place. By faith, Sarah had a baby. By faith, Abraham offered a sacrifice. Seems like everyday living to me. It seems like everything we do, we do by faith. Like how do you live your life? Whether you know it, believe it or not, you live your life by faith. There is an inner voice, an inner unction that leads you through your life. That got you from where you are to where you are. It is called faith, everybody. Whether you think you have it or not, faith is what moves you, what drives you, what inspires you, what causes you to do what you do. By faith, you moved from Arizona to Florida. By faith, by faith you did. By faith, you got up out of your bed this morning and you came to the house of God. By faith, by faith, everything we do is by faith. Faith, you are a spiritual being. The real you is the invisible you, although I think I see you. <laughs> yes, I do. Amen, everybody. May the glory of the Lord fill the house, everyone. Amen, everybody. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed Joseph and his sons. By faith, Moses, when he was born, he was hid for three months because his parents wanted to spare his life. By faith, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. By faith, he esteemed the reproach of Christ and, and the, the riches of Christ greater than all of the riches of the world. He did that by faith. Everybody, everybody. He esteemed the things of God greater than the things of the world. He did that by faith. What are the greatest things in life? The greatest things in life are the things of God. Amen. Moses knew it. Uh-huh. And he ran from it. He ran from the, the treasures of the world. My Lord, my Lord, by faith, we will value the treasures of heaven more than the treasures of this world. For our gold and silver will rot and rust. Might as well give it away, everybody. It's an illusion anyway. From what I, the last studies I've studied, <laughs> wealth is an illusion. And um, so you might as well just use it for the glory of God. <laughs> because wealth is a state of mind, the state of spirit, amen. It's a state of soul, right? Yeah, am I talking to the right group, Sister Sandra? Do we, yeah, why don't you get up and shake someone's hand? <laughs> By faith he forsook Egypt, 
by faith, not fearing the wrath of the king. You know why he didn't fear the wrath of the king, everybody? You know, you know, the king of, of, of Egypt, Pharaoh, was the greatest, strongest man in all the world, man. And these are ancient times, you know? When you got an ancient ruler, man, they destroy worlds. They destroy kingdoms. They're ruthless. Today, we're sophisticated. You know, our kings, we do things more sophisticated. But back then, they were absolutely ruthless. And it says, by faith that he considered nothing. He wasn't even afraid of him. What does it, what does it say? By faith, not fearing the wrath of the king. He, he, he endured, he rather saw him who was invisible. If you can see God and his sovereignty and his glory, you will be afraid of nothing and no one. Amen. Because you see the one who is invisible who is truly ruler of it all. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Isn't that beautiful? By faith. By faith. The faith that was handed down to us from our fathers, from our uncles, from our forefathers, from our mothers, from our grandmothers. Amen? Amen. Uh-huh. And in which we shall also hand down. We shall also hand down. And we will cause faith to rise up. Amen? For we shall live by faith, and we shall be encouraged and reminded that by faith is how we live, because the invisible realm is, is, is real, and the invisible, re the, the invisible realm is real. The visible realm is rather the illusion, everybody. It's rather the realm that decays and fades away and has no enduring, enduring goodness to it. Huh, isn't that something? Yeah. The writer of Hebrews goes on to say, he says, and what more shall I say? So I say, and what more shall I say? For time would fail me if I was to tell you of Gideon and Barak and Samson. I'd like to. I'd like to talk about Samson for a while. Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all of the prophets. You know what it says of them? It says that who through faith, you know what they did, everybody? They subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. You think you have no influence in this world? You have the influence to, to bring about righteousness in this world. It says they obtained promises. It says they stopped the mouths of lions. Now, now, now for us, not physical lions, I don't deal with them. But there are lots of roaring lions in this world. Not only in your life. There are roaring lions in this world. But the ones of faith are the ones who stand up and they stop the mouths of the lions. I believe it was David as a boy. What did he do as a boy? I think he took him by the jaw and like ripped him in half, something like that. That's right. How'd he do it? How'd he do it? No one wants to answer? You want to play along? Yeah, by faith. <laughs> bear, he did it by faith. Now, I'm sorry to say he also destroyed the bear, but I know that's no influence <laughs> in regard to who you are. <laughs> Welcome to the family. <laughs> Live and in person. <laughs> <laughs> it says, by faith, they quench the violence of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, they were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. They turned to flight the armies of aliens. Now, back in the Bible days, the aliens were the Philistines. Back in our days, they're actually aliens. <laughs> Should the aliens come, we shall put them to flight. I feel like the president on Independence Day. They shall put them to flight. <laughs> and they were, okay. <laughs> okay, back to your life now. <laughs> I'm going to talk about some sad stuff. You ready? <laughs> By faith, everybody, they were able, it, it says they were able to, to they, they were sawn asunder, they were drowned, they were beaten. But the but, but bottom line is they were able to endure the torments of life. How are we able to endure the hardships and the torments of life? How are you able to endure your hard times, everybody? How are you able to endure them? Somebody help me. Faith. By faith. 
<laughs> you got it, man. That's it. <laughs> You're going to show me. <laughs> I'm a bear. Hear me. <laughs> By faith. By faith, everybody. How do you get through your life? The hard times. It says they experienced feelings of loss, of, of, of loss. It said that they would wander in wildernesses. You know, when Moses took out um, the Israelites out of um, um, Egypt, it says they wandered the wilderness for 40 years, man. I mean, we also experience the same thing. How many times, how many times do you just say to God or yourself, you think nobody's listening? Say, man, I'm so lost. Anyone say that one recently? You don't have to raise your hands. <laughs> I'm just lost, man. You know, I was saying that the other day. I was going to leave my room. <laughs> I'm just lost. And it's by faith that we're able to walk through the wilderness, everybody. You will experience your trials and your fires and your torments. You will experience your wilderness wanderings where you'll be lost, not know who you are or why you are or why you are where you are. But faith will cause you to endure how do you get through the wilderness wanderings, everybody? By faith. And you think it was just by the skin of your teeth. No, it wasn't. It was by faith. That's right, everybody. Praise God. Because we believe in something better. Faith is always believing in something better. It's always believing in something next. It's not the end. And therefore, Hebrews 12, it says, Wherefore, seeing that we are also are compa compassed by such a great cloud of witness, I say, I say, because of those who have gone before us with faith, because we're surrounded by those who live by faith, I say, because of our mothers and our fathers and our grandparents who live by faith, I say then, I say then, let us also, let us also, live by faith. Sometimes you think of those who have gone before you, I can think of, you know, our parents, our grandparents, who they would live with such meager means, but they lived by faith and they lived large. And they never saw the scarcity of life, but they saw the fullness of it, of family and love. And they lived by faith. And they believed in something invisible. And they taught us to do the same. And I say, because we are compassed with such a great cloud of witness, because those whom we loved who have taught us, they, 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 they circle us round about and they, they look on the playing field, if it were, and they're watching us live our lives. And because they look on, I say, I say to us all, I say to us all, and I say to, to the great cloud of witness this day, I say, let us also, let us also live by faith. Amen, everybody. Just live by faith. I'm not talking about how right or wrong you think you live. It does not matter how right or wrong you think you live. It does not matter if you woke up this morning feeling guilty or righteous. Because sometimes it's one or the other, man. You can just walk through the middle of a day and all of a sudden you just feel like you're guilty and wrong no matter which way you turn. It does not matter. You can still live by faith. Whether you live this right life right or wrong in anybody's eyes, you can still live by faith, by, by believing in God, believing in the invisible, believing there's always something more than meets the eye. There's something more going on than I can comprehend. There's a greater truth. There's a greater life. There's a greater something happening. Amen, everybody. So therefore, because we're compassed by such a great cloud of witness, I say, I say, let us also do the same. And it says this, it says, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. I say it does not matter. It does not matter whether you think you're living right or wrong. You live by faith, everybody. You live by faith. Looking unto Jesus, right? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher Apparently not of the sentence, but I am the author and the finisher <laughs> of our faith. That's a Bible verse, everybody. <laughs> That's a Sunday school Bible verse. Sunday school will start also the beginning of August. Pastor Phil will teach it. <laughs> okay. How do we get faith, everybody? 
Number one, who wants to shout out? Faith comes by hearing. Hey, faith comes by. Say it one more time. Faith comes by hearing. Okay, that was excellent. Thank you. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Have you ever, um, you know, um, been told by somebody or maybe you said it yourself, but, you know, you hear somebody say, well, God talked to me this morning. Anyone you ever hear someone say that? And it's okay. I mean, I'm, not, I'm saying I, I, I believe God does talk to you. Some people I don't know, but most of the times I, I believe you. <laughs> um, I try to believe you as much as possible. But, you, say, you know, you say, you know, <laughs> God spoke to me this morning. I heard the Lord say, so I'll, you know, I'll just double check it with my spirit and then say, go on, go on. But, you know, someone says the Lord spoke to me and told me to do this and to do that. You know, God does speak to us, everybody. You know, uh, we all have the spoken word in our life. Now, anytime you hear someone say God spoke to me, I know once again, as a younger man, perhaps when I would hear the preachers or the, 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 the whatever, men and women who, who, who taught us. They said that, that God spoke to them. Sometimes I would envision like they were in their room, right? And did well, like, did, did, um, <laughs> did an angel appear? Because some would really embellish and say an angel appeared and talked to me or like God, like they heard, they heard the audible voice of God. Maybe, maybe not. The truth of the matter is God does speak to us, but it's, it's real simple, everybody. It's just an inner voice. The same way that God spoke to the chosen and the mighty, he speaks to you. It's an inner voice. And sometimes that inner voice is so profound you could swear everybody on earth hears it. But no, just you. Like when Paul got up from his horse, he said, did you hear that? Did you see that? Paul, we heard and saw nothing. But he did. You'll hear a voice loud and clear. You all hear a voice. The voice is within you. The voice that guides you through life. It's inside of you. It is the God in you. The God in you guides you through life, speaks to you. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. What word of God? A preacher preaching on a Sunday? And maybe that's, that's, that's a small, that's not really it. The, the word of God is, is, is the voice in your heart. Faith comes by you hearing and listening to the word that's in your heart. You can ignore me, and you, I know you ignore Pastor Phil all the time, sometimes you ignore me. And that's allowable. That's, just, that's, that's, Gary, thought we were friends. <laughs> You couldn't even take that one, right? Oh, that was too bad. That was too wrong. <laughs> Anytime Pastor Phil speaks, <laughs> when it rings true, and how often it does inside of my heart, I know it is the word of God. Now, he keeps on going, and I am impressed. I have to acknowledge the gift that he has, because God has opened up the word of God to him. Give me the minute. That's okay. Because I remember you asked for that and you got it. Sometimes he says too many things. I know I'm not going to remember them all. I don't try to. But I'll take a piece or two. <laughs> the ones that I like. Amen. <laughs> Truth, right? Like you can't take it all. <laughs> That's too much. So when Phil, Pastor Phil and myself, when we speak, really the true voice is within you. It's the voice in your heart that says, I agree with that. That's true. That's right. That's real. You see, you can all say that God spoke to me because God will speak to you from inside of you and he will guide you through your entire life. He will say, go to this school and don't go to that school. He'll say, pursue this subject and don't pursue. That. He'll say, go here and go there. He'll, 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 he'll talk to you. He'll say, he'll say, build a boat. He'll say, move. He'll say, have a baby. He'll say, offer a sacrifice. It's just everyday life. When, when we hear Hebrews 11, it's, it's just people living their everyday life. It's like you, you, you can, I can put your name in there. God said, have a baby. God said, move. God said, said, said bless, bless somebody in, in your household, right? Does that sound like your life? Sounds like mine. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. And how do you do it? Everybody, two words, by faith. How do you do it? By faith. Faith comes by hearing. What do you hear? It's, it's the voice of God inside of you. And you all have the voice of God inside of you guiding you through this life. God wants you to believe in it, to live by it, absolutely live by it, and let nothing and no one move you from that voice, because it is the only real true thing, because everything else will topple and fall, but the voice inside of you, huh, it will subdue kingdoms, it will shut the mouths of lions, it will quench the fires of hell, mm-hmm. You know you have that inside of you? 
All day long, you have that inside of you. All day long. Hmm. I wish I could live there. Unfortunately, I think I just visit there. How about you? I think I just visit there. But I'd like to visit more often, wouldn't you? Amen. Yeah, amen, Eddie. That's right. It's, it's all by faith. We live by faith. We just don't know it, okay? Everything you do in life, you do it by faith. And you just think you have glimpses of it. No, you don't. It's every breath you breathe. It's every thought you have. It's every action you take. It's every, it's every, it's every care that you have in this world. And we know because we were taught by our fathers, we were taught, we were taught, amen, everybody. So faith comes by hearing, amen. And you know, there's this passage in Isaiah, it's 53, it says, it says, who has believed our report, right? You know that one, Pastor Phil. Who has believed, in other words, who has believed what they heard? There's a voice inside of you, and my question to you is, who has believed it? Do you believe your inner voice? Because lots of times we, 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 we fight with it. Do you ever fight with your inner voice? It's like you fighting. It's like a cartoon. You fight with yourself, you know? <laughs> I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it. There's a fight inside of you. And the, and the, and, and, and the response or, 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 or the admonition here in the word is, who has believed our report? Do you believe the word of God that's inside of you? And God says, believe it. I tell you, man, on this Father's Day, from this day forward, believe the word of God that's in your heart. Believe it, believe it, believe it. I don't care if every other voice in this earthly realm disagrees with the voice that's on your heart. Can I get an amen from that? I don't care if every voice on earth disagrees with the voice that's in your heart. You uh, ignore the them all. I would say to you, as my mother would say to me, ignore them all and believe the word that is on your heart and follow it with conviction and passion because that is how you live by faith. And when you live that, you will bless everyone around you for by faith you will bless your family and by faith you will bless this world. You will bless this world by ignoring the world. You will bless them by disregarding uh, the fear and the anxiety and the lies. You will disregard them by, by ignoring the, the titles and the uh, definitions and everything and so on and so forth. Amen. By faith, you will bless your family. How will you bless your family? We think we need to have money to bless our family. And we think we have accomplished nothing if we cannot give them uh, filthy riches of this earth. I say, let them burn and canker and rot. Uh-huh. And I say, I say, give them faith. For by faith, ha, by faith you will shut the mouths. By faith you will live in victory. By faith, by faith you will live this life. By faith you will bless the greatest blessing you could ever give your children faith. Abraham blessed his children. Isaac blessed his children. Jacob blessed his children. With what? Faith. Hmm. It's the only thing that you have that you can bless your children with. Faith. Amen, everybody. So faith comes by hearing, but I must say also, faith comes by hearing, and faith comes by seeing, but not, not the natural realm. For, for, you know, there's a passage, what does it say? It says, therefore, we are always confident and we know that as long as we are at home in this body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith and not by sight, everybody. We live by faith and not by sight. Faith is living by a, a vision that is not of this world. Faith doesn't mean that you're blind, you know that? Faith just means you have like x-ray vision. It means you can see the invisible world which disregards the visible world. How about that? Wouldn't you like that? Well, you got it. <laughs> well, you got it. Faith is, is, is living by sight, all right? Faith comes by hearing and faith also comes by seeing, but it comes by seeing God comes by seeing the invisible realm. It comes by seeing the unseen. That's how faith comes. For faith is not by this sight, amen? 
No, it isn't. Because it says of all of the heroes of faith, it says they looked for a city. They, they, they looked for essentially the kingdom of heaven is what they were looking for. They always saw something. What caused them to live great lives? They saw something that nobody else saw. But I don't really believe that quite honestly. I don't really believe that. I think there's a spirit inside of us and there's a faith inside of us that does believe in something uh, beyond us. That does believe in the invisible. That does believe in God. But I don't know, sometimes we just don't have the fortitude to ignore the things of the world. And all things in due time, by the way. I think everybody sees it and everybody wants it, but it's the temptations of life. The Bible, the Bible talks about the temptations of life. The temptations of what you can see and feel and that can, what can satisfy you temporarily. And sometimes God is a big loving God. He'll satisfy you temporarily just to get you through. But he says, I'm bringing you somewhere. You want a little money? Here, here's money. Here. You happy? Yes, I'm happy. I have money. Okay, good. And then when that disappears, <laughs> you want a house? <laughs> there's a house. You like it? <laughs> good. <laughs> I don't know. You might lose your house. I don't know. But you see, he will always bring us to the invisible realm. And faith comes by seeing something that is not temporal and it's not of this earth, everybody. It says here in Genesis, it says in regard to faith and seeing. You ever hear about that passage? You ever sing about that passage? You ever hear about Jehovah Jireh? Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You know, Jehovah Jireh, it talks about God providing for all of our needs. But really that word Jireh, it means the God who sees. Jireh means the God who sees. You know what he sees? <sighs> he doesn't see your today. You see your today. He sees your tomorrow. You don't see it. He sees your next year. You don't see it. He sees what you don't see. And you say, God, I need a piece of bread now. All right, fine. But I can see next year, and I can see 10 years from now, and I can see your children, and I can see your grandchildren, and I can see the generations beyond you, and I am the God who provides. I will give you something that all of your generations need. And you think you need a piece of bread now, but I think you need faith now because that's what's going to feed your generations. Your morsel of bread will satisfy you now, but what I give you through the enduring flames of fire will satisfy you from generation to generation. That's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He sees what we don't see. The provider sees what we don't see. And because we're children, we'll cry and everything else because we're children. And all we see is the now and this and that. And he loves us enough to give us the now. You know that, right? He loves you enough. He'll take, he'll take care of you now. You know that, right, everybody? He loves you. But sometimes he stretches you. And sometimes he makes you wait. And sometimes he lets you cry through the night. Right. Because he sees what you don't see. And he says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. He loves you enough. He sees. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He sees what we do not see. And he goes ahead of us and he provides for your now and he provides for your future and he provides for your children and your grandchildren and he will provide for the generations after us and after we leave this earth because we will all leave this earth but by faith listen by faith God will provide through us for the generations that will follow us for those who will fill this building after we're gone and those who will fill this earth way past our existence on this planet. And God will do it through faith, through the life that you live. And he will bless your now, but your God is greater than blessing your now. He will bless your future. Amen, everybody. How? By faith. By faith. So I close with this one thing. Faith is a gift. The Bible says, by grace you are saved through faith. It is, Pastor Phil. Okay, you can finish my sentence. It is Mr. Bible guy over there. It is a gift of God. Faith is a gift of God. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. Faith is a gift of God. You all have it. 
Happy birthday, Merry Christmas, I don't know. <laughs> you have faith, God gave it to you, it's a free gift. I don't say, may God give you faith because you have it. I say, stir it. At Paul, as Paul would admonish Timothy, he says, stir the gift that is inside of you. What is the gift inside of you? Faith. I say, stir it. I will think about my father who lived by faith. I will think about my father who did not consider the things of this world of any value and despise the things of this world. For he would run from his work, not to it. Listen, my father would not run to his work. He ran from it to get to church on time. What was church on time, Phil? Five days a week. Only mom on Thursday morning because dad was working. <laughs> Thursday morning was just mom. He didn't run to his job. He ran from it. Because he believed in something. God. He, let me say something. Because we're too sophisticated, all of us, myself included, My father did not chase riches. And did not consider the wealth of this world anything to be had. But he considered faith of the greatest value. And we're too sophisticated in our culture to understand that. But I pray that we stir the gift of faith inside of us. I don't know if you want it. I don't know if it's time for you. I don't know. I don't know. You do. God does. I pray it's time. I pray. I pray that God would stir the gift of faith in you. I pray that God would stir the gift and faith that your father gave you. I pray that you would stir the gift of faith that your mother gave you. I pray that you would stir that gift. Amen. And that you would walk by faith and not by sight. For by faith you will subdue kingdoms and you will call those things that are not as though they are. By faith you will shut the mouths of lions and you will quench the fires of hell. By faith. You will not fear the kings of this world, nor any man. And by faith, and only by faith, I close with this. It is only by faith that you can bless anybody in this life. Amen, everybody. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Which one did you select, Sister Trick, for closing? Good Father. Okay, praise and worship team. Good Father, good closing song. We're going to close with good, good Father. God bless you. Happy Father's Day. Why don't we stand? Amen. Thank you, worship team, for that song, Good Father. Um, what a great way to end that message. If we can just remember that he is our good Father, right? I mean, sometimes I forget. Thank God I have three reminders, my children. And I look at my children and I think about how I feel and the love and what they mean to me. And then it's like, man, of course, that's how he feels about us. That's how he looks at us, right? It just melts everything when you think about it that way. But uh, bless God. Uh, I don't know what's going on. My brother evidently had a lot of energy this morning. <laughs> of course, it was the power of God. <laughs> Felt like he wanted us to do jumping jacks, run around. Like, I, was he opening up his own gym here? What's going on? <laughs> But um, here's what I believe. I believe that message was an answer. It was answer to prayers this week. Uh, and maybe it wasn't a prayer. Maybe it was just things you were thinking, thoughts you were having. I believe that message was an answer to those things thought about or prayed about this week. I believe that. I believe that. And yes, it is by faith. 
2 Timothy 1, 7. Very familiar passage. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And of course, that is also the letter that Paul encouraged Timothy in turn when he talked about stirring something. God didn't give us anxiety, worry, doubt, unbelief, uncertainty. He did not give us that. What he did give us is power. The power that he's talking about, it is faith. The only power that we have is faith. But that faith, that power enables us to love. And the sound mind, when I begin to second guess any of that, I got to go back to my power and my love because it should always enable me to have power and to love. Don't second guess faith. Don't second guess it. That's the fear. That's the doubt. Ah, should I? Should I? It's what Pastor Mike just talked about. I'm rotten. No, I'm good. <laughs> go left. No, go right. Power. Power. Truth is, the majority of your life, all of it has been power that has moved you out. Yes, there are times of uncertainty, but I do believe it's the power of God. I do believe that's an on-time message. Amen? Let's go before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we are grateful, Lord, uh, as always, to be in your house, Lord God. Uh, we thank you for this wonderful day, Lord God. We do thank you for our fathers, Lord God, and for our uncles, and for all the men in our lives, Lord, that have instilled faith in our life, Lord God and uh, encouraged us and have lived by it lord god we are grateful lord god and lord we are grateful for our good father lord our heavenly father which sits above it all lord god jehovah jireh you see our every need you see our today you see our tomorrow lord god you're answering the questions before you even give us the questions lord you're answering them uh we thank you for that today lord god Lord, we pray your blessings on everybody here, everybody online, Lord God. Pray that they would enjoy the day with their family, Lord God. And know, Lord God, that it is by faith and faith alone. Because we believe in you and we trust you, Lord God. But we do have the power and the ability to love, Lord God. And not to second guess it ever, Lord. So we thank you for the day, Lord God. And pray your blessings always in Jesus' name. Amen.